What's good everybody? Welcome to Bowler's Paradise. My name is Ben. I'm a USBC Silver Certified Coach and today we're going to learn everything you need to know about bowling ball cores in just five minutes. Bowling ball design is shrouded in mystery as the manufacturers use nonsense words to make you believe that each new release is the best one ever. You're going to have less variation in your ball motion. But the truth is the best bowling ball is the one you understand the best and can strike the most with. If this content is right up your alley, be sure you're subscribed and consider joining Team Paradise to be a part of our monthly live stream review sessions and to unlock your personalized 5% discount code off all orders at bowlersparadise.com. You got it? All right, let's get five minutes on the clock and dive in. Bowling can be as simple or as complex as you wanna make it, especially when it comes to the equipment. For some bowlers, it's as simple as choosing the prettiest one on the wall. But if you're this far into this video, I have a feeling that's not you. No, you're probably one of those folks who wants to know what all these numbers on the side of the box mean and how they can improve your scores on the lanes. So as we venture into the inside of our bowling ball, you'll find a specifically designed core that is measured in three specific ways called RG, differential, and intermediate diff. In coordination with the material that covers the outside of the ball, each core is designed with its own unique set of numbers and other characteristics that make the ball behave in a certain way on the lane. Starting with the RG, that's short for radius of gyration, which probably makes even less sense than just saying RG, but don't let that name scare you. It just measures how fast the ball spins. Think of a spinning figure skater. Arms out is a high RG for a slower spin, and then as her arms go up towards the center of her body, her RG decreases, causing her to spin much faster. Now in bowling balls, that spin rate decides how quickly the ball changes direction when it encounters friction on the lane, regardless of where that friction is. One of the most common misnomers is that low RG means the ball will get down the lane easier, and that's simply not true. Rather, they tend to let bowlers move more into the oily part of the lane because of their inherent ability to hook sharply down lane. For differential, this one is super easy. While scientifically, it's used as a measure of imbalance in the core's design and the distance between flare rings on the side of the ball, in practical terms, it's just a measurement of how strong the core is to make the ball hook. USBC rules dictate that all bowling balls have a maximum of an 060 differential to limit overall hook potential. But to put it simply, the more differential a ball has, the more it wants to hook. Yes, I admit, that's a very simple answer and I could bore you with the details, but trust me, sometimes these things aren't worth overthinking. It's that simple. Just know that the higher the diff number, the more likely you are to have to move to the inside part of the lane to see the best results on the scoreboard. And then finally, we come to intermediate differential, which measures how asymmetric the core of the ball is. If there's no number listed on the side of the box or no PSA marker on the ball, the core is symmetrical and you can disregard this variable. If it is there though, you've got an asymmetric ball and that's where things get interesting. In simple terms, asymmetry adds control to how the ball flares. Typically noticed in the middle 20 feet of the lane, intermediate differential makes the ball flare more while in the oil, giving it some extra kick towards the pocket once it gets to the end of an oil pattern. It can be both a blessing and a curse because on one hand, it makes the ball more powerful, adding mid lane torque to your ball motion. But on the other hand, too much flare can make your ball hook too much and roll out, which means leaving lots of those dreaded corner pins. Some players definitely prefer asims, while others prefer symmetrical pieces. So if you're building an arsenal, I'd recommend starting simple by understanding what you currently have and then not being afraid to experiment. Because at the end of the day, no matter what the core numbers are for each of these bowling balls, there's one ball that matters most, and that's your eyeball. Seeing the difference in different core shapes and numbers requires intentional time on the lanes and some thoughtful observation. An app like 10 Pin Toolkit can help you keep track of notes on each bowling ball, how they all pair well together in your arsenal, and most importantly, when the best time to use each of these pieces may be. In time, you'll start to find trends in what works best for you. 
Some of you will love those low RG and high differential symmetrical pearls. Maybe you'll be like me and you'll discover that any ball with an O12 intermediate differential is pretty much certain to be an absolute pin killer for you. And then if that doesn't work and all else fails, you can always go back to picking the piece that matches your outfit the best. Hey, good look. Thanks for checking this one out, you guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, catch that notification bell so you don't miss any of our ball and product reviews. But most importantly, don't forget, having the right ball in your hands, now that's a bowler's paradise. Peace.